Although Anna is still yet to be cleared, I spoke with her today and she is headed down to OKC to receive an MRI on her chest. Hopefully this comes back clear and she is able to start riding again. Now for a cowboy that is known all around Stillwater and not just because of his great bat. Donnie Walton is son of the pitching coach at Oklahoma State, Rob Walton. Walton was drafted in 2016 in the fifth round by the Seattle Mariners. He now finds himself as an active player with the Mariners. His debut came in 2019. Since then, he has hit 302 in 43 at-bats. Bringing you today's biggest stories. The trial of Derek Chauvin is underway in Minneapolis. Chauvin made headlines last summer after he was involved in the death of George Floyd after Chauvin placed his knee on the neck of Floyd while he pleaded, I can't breathe. This moment was caught on video and led to widespread protests against police brutality and racism under the Black Lives Matter movement. The trial began today with jurors being shown the final moments of George Floyd's life, the same video that went viral last summer. We will update you on more of the trial when it comes available. While Tevin likes to grill on his free time and make burgers and steaks for his family and friends, he also has other things that he's been doing while not training for the NFL draft. I'm gonna give this cooking thing a try and maybe I can go in the first round too. Back to the Daily O. I'm Gabby Sprang and let's get into sports. OSU travels for the first time this week as the Pokes take on another Big 12 rival in the Kansas Jayhawks. Oklahoma State is trying to start the year 3-0 and 2-0 in the Big 12 Conference. Alex Dusky previews the big showdown in Lawrence, Kansas. Meet Tevin Jenkins, a former offensive lineman at Oklahoma State University and two-time All-Big 12 honorable mention and future NFL first-round draft pick. But there is far more to Tevin than just blocking opponents on the line. Complete opposite off the field than how he is portrayed on the field. Um, on the field, I know he can. people say he's really mean, he's nasty, he's a bully, and off the field, like... He's the most kind-hearted person. Like, he he would be the person to, like, stop what he's doing just because somebody needed help. Like, whether, whether that's, like, somebody couldn't reach the top shelf at the grocery store or somebody's pulled off the side of the road. Like, he's just that person that always wants to help. Um, never talks about football or what – never talks about him. Always wants to talk about other people and very interested in any conversation he's brought into. Ultimately, just being able to be that kind of kind and trustworthy person. A lot of people have uh, a lot of faith in me to do whatever um, it may be. Is like you go to as little as doing like a doing a certain job for them, like a favor or anything like that, and being able to uh, make sure that I'll be able to finish the job. While Tevin likes to grill on his free time and make burgers and steaks for his family and friends, he also has other things that he's been doing while not training for the NFL draft. I'm going to give this cooking thing a try, and maybe I can go in the first round, too. The uh, only thing I've been doing, really, is uh, playing video games, grilling, and tending to Sydney. That's the only thing I've been doing, and trying to help and help her plan for her future and, uh, like, seeing all of our friends and going to all the weddings, and hopefully we can uh, be a part of that. I know she will be, but I'm hopefully I can be able to make every, uh, make every one of them. I can go to him about anything in any mood. But how sassy or how grumpy I'm in, and he can just handle me. Like, he knows how to handle every situation and loves me, good or bad. And that's what I love most about him. Don't show it. Don't show it. That's, that's, all, gross. Look, that's the only thing I can do right there. It's my hidden talent. I can do it both peaks. Ew. That's kind of cool. <laughs> that's the only thing I got. I don't like anything else. <laughs> As a Division I athlete, it requires you to be in shape physically and mentally. But since COVID-19, student-athletes are left with permanent health concerns. Anna Biard on the equestrian team tested positive for COVID-19 back in August, and she is still yet to be cleared and get back onto her horse to do the thing she loves. Like not being able to participate in team stuff. Like I can't go to workouts. I can't go to the barn and practice. I'm honestly not even supposed to go out and help because I can't do anything to raise my heart rate. So I think probably the hardest thing is not being able to ride or work out because it's definitely like made me kind of sad because that's always been like something I've always enjoyed. As many as one in three patients recovering from COVID-19 report some sort of neurological or physical damage. At Oklahoma State, athletes are put through multiple heart tests before being cleared to play. 
The tests that are performed are an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, and an EKG, which is a heart tracing test that provides information on the rhythm of your heart. These kinds of tests are normally only performed on someone who has a pre-existing heart defect or just suffered from a heart attack. So after our athletes um, test positive for COVID-19, there's a lot of health implications that we're not sure um, can result from that. We're mostly concerned with cardiac health concerns. So um, whether that be myocarditis or any other heart conditions, um, that arise from the virus. And Although Anna is still yet to be cleared, I spoke with her today and she is headed down to OKC to receive an MRI on her chest. Hopefully this comes back clear and she is able to start riding again here at the Equestrian Center. With the Poke Report, I'm Gabby Sprang. According to the Housing and Residential Life website, their isolation protocol requires all students that are living on campus to isolate away from everyone if they test positive for COVID-19. OSU is using a hotel here in Stillwater where you would be isolated for 10 to 14 days. During this time period, you are not allowed to leave your room for any reason. All meals are brought to you by dining services here on campus. Put in the continental type style breakfast so the students can eat when they want to. And then lunch is more uh, fresh made daily uh, grab and go items like wraps, salads, uh, sandwiches. For the lunch and the dinner is uh, our uh, chef in the kitchen uh, prepare fresh daily, uh, more like uh, microwavable meal. So it's prepared in the microwavable container. So it's when it's delivered to the students, they can eat it at the time when they want to eat. These meals while in isolation are brought to you once daily. This service will cost you $20 a day and can be paid with a campus meal plan or charged to your bursar account. These meals will be delivered each day from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. The food will be left outside of your room at the door. All other snacks that you may want are not provided and are supposed to be brought prior to isolation. At this time, students in isolation are not allowed to order local restaurant delivery services, Grubhub, Uber Eats, grocery delivery, or snacks in the hotel lobby. So I know what you're thinking. I could break out of this hotel and get out of isolation. You're wrong. There's people inside this hotel that are ready to report you to OSU for breaking CDC guidelines while being tested positive for COVID-19. The department requires you to follow the guidelines based on quarantine. If you choose not to do that, they can put a court order out, um, you know, for that. Uh, and so we, we talked a lot to students about making sure you're following the process. You cannot leave. You can't have visitors um, during that time frame. You really do need to isolate. For more information on OSU's isolation protocol while living on campus, you can log on to reslife.okstate.edu. For Pete's Corner, I'm Gabby Sprang.